At one point, we were living in D.C. We had this place in Singletree as a second home. And we came out here and Chris and I woke up in the morning and I literally looked at Chris and I said, you know, for the first time in months, I feel truly relaxed. This is great. And literally, I mean, that moment, the phone rang and it was Matt and Jim was having some sort of episode, episode in Matt's apartment. And he was going to threatening to beat up Matt's roommate. Yeah. And he put a hole in the wall. And I mean, it was insanity. And so I said, Matt, you need to call the police. And he goes, Dad, I can't call the police on my brother. And I said, Matt, I'm your father. And I want you to call the police on my son, because that's what we have to do. Pete and I have four children. We have twin boys, Matt and Jim. We have two daughters. Claire is 36 and Abby just turned 35 and she's the youngest and only one married to Tyler. They just had our first grandchild last June. So she's almost the greatest like, grandchild in the world. Yes. Just... <laughs> All four kids, they're super <laughs> smart kids. The boys, Jim went to Duke undergrad and Matt went to Vanderbilt. And Jim went to law school at the University of Denver and got an MBA and a JD and graduated number one in his law school class. Then he gets this great job in New York and that's really when things hit the rails. And because it was a Wall Street you know, law firm type job where the kids work 100 to 120 hours a week and they take Adderall to stay awake and they take Xanax to go to sleep. And you know, the, the substitute for Adderall on the street is methamphetamine. And that's what he's completely addicted, addicted, to, addicted now. to now. Yeah. And okay. has been for years. Over the past 10 years, Jim has been admitted to rehab eight times and we've done 10 either hard or soft interventions on him. Whatever the script was, you know, that's what we'll do. You know, so we hired experts and they said, hey, you got to say this. This is how you do it. And I'm in. You know, we would fly all over the world to save Jim and did. Our daughter, Abby, who is, has our granddaughter, she gets married Saturday night. And on Sunday morning, a town car picks up Chris and I to drive us to the airport so we can fly to Bangkok, Thailand and visit Jim in a Thai prison. So that's called multitasking. And people <laughs> say, well, how did you do that? And I said, well, okay. first we did this and it was super joyous and then we did this. But you, you ask how you keep your sanity and how you, so we're, you know, we actually have great memories of our trip to Thailand. Oh, yeah. And we also felt great about what we did for Jim. It's a struggle though, because like, also by doing things sometimes, we're probably just been enabling, right? Because most of the times when we've jumped in, it's been a massive, you know, crisis situation. You know, like one time he was stuck in Hong Kong because he hadn't paid taxes. So should we just left him in Hong Kong and let him figure, you know, sometimes you don't know. But you know, the bottom line is, is we kind of, you know, evolved over 10 years you know, we are, first of all, holding hands. We are together <laughs> in, in a really profound way. And, you know, one of the things that we've learned is that no amount of perseverance on our part and no amount of money can save Jim. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not that he can't be saved. And it it's, says a lot to the disease. Yeah, you know, the yeah. disease is horrible. If he doesn't want it. If he it, doesn't want yeah. it, he's not going to get, you know, he's not going to become recovered. Over the years, starting from that very first counselor we went to, we have always gotten counselors. You know, I have to detach because I, I can't be a mess because I don't want to be a mess for Pete. I don't want to be a mess for my other kids or for our little granddaughter. As important as it is to help solve a problem for a loved one or a friend, it's also important for people to understand that you can have your own life. Well, the best example is on the plane when they say, if the oxygen mask, you know, put it on yourself first, yeah. then the kid. Because we're no good to anybody if we're not good to ourselves. There's definitely a stigma with addiction and mental illness. I want to stand on a rooftop and say, my son is a drug addict because 
It's so hard to even know where to begin to solve the problem, you know, a mental health or an addiction problem. I mean, I know where Colorado Mountain Medical is if I have a headache, but you know, my son's a drug addict, what do I do? We tell everybody we know about Jim. If we can help anybody in any way, then we want to do that.